In Module 3 we briefly cover a subclass of matrices, namely vectors. A vector is simply a matrix that has one row or one column. We use lowercase letters in bold to represent vectors. With matrices we talked about elements, but here we talk about the components or coordinates of vectors. In general the same rules of operation apply to vectors as with matrices. One important difference is in the case of vector multiplication. When we multiply two vectors together, we call it a dot product, a scalar product, or an inner product. And we treat it slightly differently to matrix multiplication. As long as both vectors have the same number of components, we can carry out the multiplication. The dot product, A dot B, is this. We multiply the corresponding components together, A1, B1, A2, B2, and so on, up to A N B N and then we sum the products of the components. A common example in economics could be a vector of prices times a vector of quantities. The inner product, then, is the total revenue. We can also use matrix notation to represent the product of vectors A and B. In this case, they would need to be compatible. Say we start with two column vectors, A and B, then we would need to have a row vector by a column vector. So we'd have A prime B. A prime B is a 1 by n matrix times an n by 1 matrix, giving us a 1 by 1 matrix, or a scalar. But back to dot products, we have some rules. If A, B and C are n vectors, and alpha is a scalar, then we have the following. Dot products of two vectors have the commutative property. They also have the distributive property. And if alpha is a scalar, if we multiply vector A by a scalar first, or B by the scalar first, or if we take the dot product, then multiply by the scalar, we end up with the same result. If we have the dot product of a vector by itself, and that's greater than zero, then the vector cannot be a null vector. Vectors can have a geometric interpretation that's widely used in many branches of maths. A vector has both magnitude and direction. So vector A has a length from there to there, and it's pointing in a particular direction. We can think of it as a movement in the plane, in this case the xy plane. Starting at point P, the movement is A1 in the x direction, and then A2 in the y direction. So the point Q, with coordinates Q1, Q2, is equal to P1 plus A1, P2 plus A2. There's a geometric interpretation to vector addition and subtraction. Geometrically, if we add two vectors A and B, that's equivalent to moving to point A1, A2, and then adding on B, or going to point B1, B2, and then adding on A. In general, when we add two vectors A plus B, we join the head of one to the tail of the other. On the other hand, the geometric interpretation of the subtraction of two vectors involves joining the two vectors at the tails. So we have A and B, and here we have the difference. Another way of thinking about that is B plus A minus B, so from head to tail, is equal to A. In the next lecture, we'll look at multiplying vectors by matrices in the context of solving simultaneous equations. In geometric terms, that's the equivalent of performing a number of linear operations on a vector. Before finishing up with an example, we'll consider two concepts associated with vectors. The first is the length or norm of a vector. If we have vector A, we represent the length of A by putting two vertical lines either side of the vector. The length of a vector is just the square root of the dot product of the vector width itself. If we go back to the geometric interpretation of a vector, we can see where this comes from. Let's consider a vector in the xy plane. As we saw, the vector represents movement of a1 in the x direction and a2 in the y direction. So we have a triangle with the base a1, a height a2, and a hypotenuse, the length of the vector a. We can apply Pythagoras' theorem. So the hypotenuse, that's the length of A, squared is equal to A1 
squared plus 8 2 squared. Taking the square root, the length of a is equal to the square root of a1 squared plus a2 squared. The same principle holds in the n-dimensional case. A useful relationship that sometimes crops up with vectors is the cauchy schwarz inequality. This states that the absolute value of the dot product is less than or equal to the product of the lengths of a and b. Finally, when two vectors are at right angles to each other, they're said to be orthogonal. The dot product of orthogonal vectors is zero. We represent orthogonality between two vectors like this. So if a and b are orthogonal, then the dot product is zero. If we take a simple case like this, where a is parallel to the y-axis and b is parallel to the x-axis, we'll have the vector a is equal to a zero, a two, the vector b will equal b1, 0. So we can easily see that the dot product a dot b is equal to 0. That also holds for the more general case where a and b aren't parallel to the axes. We'll finish up with an example. A firm has three products where the x vector represents the output and the p vector represents the prices. We want to find the total value of output. We can do that as a matrix product. We have two column vectors, a 3 by 1 and a 3 by 1. So to make those matrices compatible, we take the product P prime X. So we have 1 by 3 and a 3 by 1, and gives us a 1 by 1. Of course, that's also equivalent to the dot product X dot P. In our next lecture, we'll start the process of solving sets of equations using matrix algebra.